morning I'm going to have to kind of go through this a little fast because I want to give a report because you all invested in our time uh, down south. But this message is very <laughs> applicable for today. Very applicable. Um, we're going through the series, you know, uh, to be like Jesus. And already, uh, Zach, I want to say thank you. Um, he did a great job, I understand, um, talking about the relationship that Jesus had with the Father. And, you know, listen, that relationship, all of us, okay, love the relationship when we get the yeses. Anybody else? We get the blessings, okay? But that we really see how our relationships are personally and with God when we go through the hard times, when we get the no's, when we get there's no other way. And we see Jesus in that moment in the garden, so intimate with his father that, you know, he said, Father, is there any other way? And God said, no, son. Not my will be done, but yours be done, Father. That's, that's intimacy. We saw that Jesus, you know, not only lived in relationship with his Father, but lived in relationship with others. The little story of Zacchaeus. You know, it, listen, we all can relate to Zacchaeus. We all feel marginalized. We all have those hang-ups and hurts and pains in our life. Anybody else besides me? You know, we know the story. He was a wee little man. Okay? He understood that. But then, you know, so he was born small. But then Zacchaeus made some really bad choices. He sold his soul. Sold his soul to the Romans. He forsook his, his family, he forsook his, his nation, he forsook, if you will, his God in many ways. Because he was a tax collector. He extorted money. He was a crook and a criminal. And yet Jesus reached across the aisle, if you will, reached, walked across the block, over the tracks, and with open arms, not a pointed finger, said, Zacchaeus, I want to have dinner with you. He lived in a right relationship with people. And I think, did, uh, I'm not sure, but last week you should have got, he was living on mission. Did you get that one? If not, I'll, I'll do that one next week, okay? Because I, I wasn't sure where we were. But Jesus clearly understood his mission who God created him to be and what he was to do. He had a clear understanding. He stated that when he says, you know, I come to seek and to save that which is lost. And see, I think for a lot of us sitting in churches across America, we wander around and in, in dazed and confused because we really don't know what God has created us for and why we're here and what our mission is and his plan for our life. Anybody relate to that? Well, listen, we can know. We can know. And then today we're going to see that Jesus lived for others. He loved others. Now these four things, you know, this is a year-long series, and we're breaking it up so it doesn't, oh, okay, here we go again. We're breaking it up. But these four things really set the foundation for, really, for us to be like Jesus. How we can live it out. And we're going to talk about the practical things. This is the overview. But as we look at this, you know, how do we love? The idea of loving and being in a loving, you know, really love people. Well, we chose the story, and I'm going to tell the story, instead of just reading it, of Jesus in the upper room at his last supper. You know, that's an intimate time. And John, John paints such a beautiful picture of it. You know, Jesus institutes the, the, the covenant, if you will, the breaking of bread and, and, the, and the cup that represents his blood and, and talks about it. And, and there's intimacy. Can you imagine sitting around that table? 
I mean, it was just the 12. And you know, it says after supper, Jesus got down and, and lowered himself and humbled himself to the point of, you know, becoming the lowest servant in the house. And he washed the feet of all of the disciples. Not just James and John and Peter, his closest friends. But he washed Judas' feet. He showed Judas the same love, the same concern, and served him the same way, and offered him the same mercy and the same grace as he offered all of them. And after he washed their feet, he looked at Judas and said, Go do what you need to go do. Go do what you need to go do. And so Judas leaves and Jesus says, Hey, listen, I'm going to be leaving you. God's going to glorify himself in and through me. And I'm going to bring glory to my father. Now, I remember the last words of my father. Anybody else besides me have those memories, those types of things? And Jesus says something here that I can't find anywhere else. He looks at those 12 instead of saying, hey, boys, gentlemen. He draws them close. He draws them into himself. And he says, my dear children, my dear children. I remember my dad when he passed away, you know, his last words to me, the last audible words that he spoke to anybody. He didn't say Curtis. See, everybody else gets to call me Curtis. He drew me in close and says, son. Because, see, he's the only one who had really, truly the right to call me son. He says, son, I love you. I'm proud of you. Take care of your mother. That is burned in my brain. It's on my heart. I get emotional just going back and reliving that moment. And he passed away just a few hours later. Jesus is having that same moment with his, with his 12. And he says, sons, my children, I have a new commandment for you. And notice he didn't say I have a new suggestion. I have four steps for you to have a better life now. He says, I have a new commandment for you. Love each other. Love each other as I have loved you. In this way, the whole world, not just those in Jerusalem, just not your family, just not those in, in the church, but the whole world will know that you're my disciples. Guys, this is such an, an intimate and such a, a, a pointed moment in, 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 his, in his relationship with these disciples. And he says, love. You say, Pastor, it says all over the Bible to love each other. Old and New Testament. Over and over again. But see, Jesus made it very radical made it very different when he said, love each other like I, like Jesus has loved you. That changes the whole picture. It changes the whole picture in how we're to love. You know, Paul tells us in Ephesians how we ought to love each other. When he says, husbands, love your wife, as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up. Gave himself up for her. For us. 
It paints the picture that true love is sacrificial. True love isn't about getting, but about giving. About giving ourselves away. And you see, right there, we begin to put conditions. You know, the fullness of this commandment and the cost that it places upon our life is nothing less than we come and die a sacrificial death. For who? For each other. For each other. This is why we're the bridge. Jesus said in John 15, he says, This is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Verse 13. Greater love has no man than this, that one lay his life down for his friends. And we love to stop there. But see, Jesus, Jesus gave us, gave us this, this beautiful picture and then he gives us the command. You're my friend if you do what I command you. Do what? Love. To love each other. Jesus said, you know, and this is why we're the bridge, okay? This, this one verse grabbed my heart and my soul. And when Jesus said to his disciples, he says, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me. I now send you. You see, Jesus' life isn't just a helpful suggestion for us to live by. His, his commands aren't just, you know, good ideas. In fact, they're commands. They're the only way that we can truly love, the only way that we can, can truly see the world changed is when we love like Christ loves. You see, let me ask. I don't like what I wrote. How did Jesus love you? Did he love you with preconditions? Did he love you and say, like so many of us, listen, I'll extend love to you. I'm going to say it verbally, but I will only extend love. I will only sacrifice for you if. If and put whatever it is. If you stop, if you do, if you if, 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 if. You see, Jesus was a living example of God's love. Listen, His love comes without condition to us. His love was shown to me, okay, listen, when I was messed up, screwed up, and deserving of a place called hell. He didn't withhold anything from me. But we say, listen, I'll love you and I'll do good to you. I'll show you love. I'll, I'll do things that, that exemplify it if you stop or if you do. You see, Jesus said even the Son of Man did not come to be saved but to serve and to give his life as a ransom. You see, too often in the evangelical church, we've been quick to say, Jesus loves you and will help you if you will stop and put whatever you want to put there. You get your life straightened up and, you know, you stop doing the bad things. And Now listen, love of God does not, does not say, oh listen, your sin doesn't matter. In fact, the love of God says your sin does matter. It matters so much that God gave His only begotten Son to wipe away your sin on a place called Calvary on an instrument of torture called the cross. So true love doesn't just powder puff sin, but true love doesn't put conditions on love. It's sacrificial. Jesus sacrificed for me. So let me ask, we would all agree that Jesus sacrificed for us, wouldn't we? He paid the debt that we could not pay on a place called Calvary with his own life. Let me ask, if I were to give you, put a three by five card in, your, in the bulletin day and handed each one out and said, I want you to write down the last time you sacrificed for anyone besides yourself. 
Could you write something down? I sacrificed to love. See, now it comes real personal. It just went from intellectual to, yeah, it's real life. I mean, how are you doing at giving yourself away? Serving others. Well, they don't deserve it. Judas didn't deserve his feet washed, yet Jesus knelt down and washed them and did it with the right attitude. You didn't deserve God's mercy, love, and grace, yet he extended it and showed it to you. If I said, write down how you've given yourself away this week. What sacrifices are you making? You see, we're real good at giving off the top, giving the extra, giving the, the abundance that we have out of that. Can I, I'm going to say this, that is not a sacrifice. See, David you know, they were bringing the, King David, they were bringing the, the Ark of the Covenant back and he wanted uh, to make a sacrifice before God. And one of the guys in town come and said, hey David, I'll give you my, my threshing floor, I'll give you the, the animal, I'll get you the wood, I'll give it all to you. And David looked at him and said, hey listen, I'm sorry. But if you give it to me, it costs me nothing. And if it costs me nothing, my sacrifice will not be acceptable before God. When was the last time you sacrificed to give, to go, to be? See, it changes how we love. I said, what does all that have to, you know, that, that's, that, that's, I, I love people. I, I, I give a little extra in the offering occasionally. I, no, listen, are we sacrificing? Are we, are we loving out of, okay, a place of sacrifice? Are we just mouthing words and just kind of out of the excess of what we have? Because, you know, excess goes away. Did anybody know that? Okay, one flat tire. I get a flat tire on my truck. It cost me almost $400. Guess what happened to the extra I had that week, that month? Or do I give out of my, my, what I need to survive and trust God? Do I serve trusting God that, yeah, listen, if I go help them, I can't do this, but this will get taken care of if I just go serve and sacrifice my time. You see, John, the one who had his head on Jesus' shoulder, said this. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. He sacrificed for us. We ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. We ought to sacrifice. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? There's sarcasm in there. There is a pointed finger. How, what? You're telling me you love God, but you're not really? Little children, let us, love, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. You see, love is, is, is active. Love, love moves forward. Love sacrifices. Lo Listen, my wife sacrifices every day for me. Can I get an amen? Okay, just to love me. It's a sacrifice. I sacrifice for her. Can you imagine how families would be changed if they would just live this out? But see, how, how, can, I, how can I really live that out? How can I follow the example? How can I give myself away? Well, first I must have the relationship with God right. You know, Jesus said, you know, they tried to put him in a corner and he, asking him, what's the greatest commandment? And he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And this is the greatest and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbors yourself. On these two things... On these two commandments, everything else hangs. Everything else comes into play. 
Listen, until we have a right relationship with God, we love God. We come before Him and lay our lives out and say, it is yours, use it as you please. I sacrifice myself before you. We can't love others. You see, the heart, the, the word that's used here is agape, or it's agapo, actually, but it's the form of agape. That, and that's what we're commanded to love God. That's what God, Jesus commanded us to love others with. That is an unselfish, total uh, 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 love that, that, that gives oneself away. And listen, that's in, impossible without the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because if you didn't know this, let me give you a little hint into the human psyche. We're all selfish. That's default mode. You see, I have to be in a right relationship with God and I, I have to give Him my, my entire heart. That, that's my affections and my desires. I have to give Him my soul, which is the, the being that makes me who I am and what I am. And I have to give Him my mind that holds on to my intellect. I have to surrender it all at the cross. You see, if I begin to love God completely, I will most definitely begin to love others. Because see, I won't see the fact that you did this and I can't forgive you. I won't see the fact that you have done that and you deserve where you are. I won't see, oh, listen, they've always done, I won't see those things because I will see you intrinsically made in the image of God and I will love you based upon that one sole fact, if nothing else. I will love, you will love. Listen, you have to, uh, to have the first right before we can move to the second. The word love, again, is agape, a sacrificial love. If you love me, if you agape me, you will keep my commandment. I will ask the Father, here's the promise, because we can't. Jesus knew when he said, love, love and keep my command. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He says, listen, and I'm telling you, you can't do it. This is why I'm sending you the helper. I'm sending you the helper. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the wor world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be with you. We can't do this and we can't love without the love of God in us. So begs the question, how are you doing at loving God? How are you doing at loving Him? You see, you've got to get that one right. Oh, I give an hour. Mm, close. Still ain't it. Oh, I put a little extra money in the, in the offering. Every, no, that ain't it. Does he have your heart and your affections and your desires? Does he control your intellect? Does he? Listen, I wish I could tell you I had that all figured out at all the time. But I can tell you how I stopped loving. I stopped spending time in his word and letting it wash and renew me. I stopped spending time in prayer, not always asking, but listening and being eager to hear the voice of my Savior. When I stop my relationship with God, I instantly become a mean, grumpy old man. Listen, and if it's just legalism that you're doing, oh, I get up every morning and I spend 20 minutes. I, you know, not 21, not 19, 20. I read my devotion. I did my thing. I, no. Mm -mm. When was the last time you sacrificed anything because you love God and you're following the example? You sacrifice time, something you like, so you can serve or do or be. You maybe postponed that whatever you needed to have, the most important thing, whatever new toy that is. You sacrificed it or put it off for a while so that you could be faithful in your giving. When was the last time you sacrificed 
your time, your talent, your money for anybody sitting around you. You see, it says love one another. Sacrifice for each other. When was the last time you sacrificed for somebody who doesn't know Jesus? Well, you don't know the people I work with. Oh, yeah, I do. They're just like the people I work with. I, sorry, Deb. Okay, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> They're human. Listen, if we're going to see, and we are seeing, God is doing such great things, He's going to attack us at that level. You see, true love says, you know what, I know that that person may never forgive me, but I'm going to offer and extend it. True love says that person deserves what they're getting, but I'm still going to offer love and sacrifice for them. True love says, whatever you need. Didn't say want, whatever you need, I'm willing. And that'll prove that we're his disciples. Not by how many hours we spend in church or how much we give, but how much we love. But listen, you have to know God's love in order to love that way. Listen, I don't know everybody that's sitting here this morning. But I know the same God who loved a messed up, screwed up kid. And rescued me when I cried out. It's the same God that stands before you and says, I love you. Come to me. The burden of sin that you carry. The weight of the guilt I've come to take it all away. I only ask one thing from you. I only ask one thing from you. Come. Surrender your life to my love. My kingship. We're going to close in just a minute. But I don't want to let this moment slip away. Maybe you're sitting here and you're saying, you know, I really don't love my husband, my wife, my kids, my workers. Listen, fall back in love with Jesus and it'll be amazing how fast you fall back in love with those around you.